The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Tip 78. Quick Harp Glissando Tricks Harp glissandos can be thrilling, and they can be utterly predictable. One of the most common unconscious errors an orchestrator can make is to only score the full diatonic scale of a harp in a glissando when there are so many other options. By simply changing some pedals to reflect an enharmonic unison with another pitch, the composer can selectively erase certain parts of the scale for a more open kind of sound. Let's take a full C major scale arpeggio, in which every pitch is present. What you'll start to notice after a while is the leading tone of B to C. It gives the arpeggio a certain solid, thick character. It's certainly appropriate in many, if not most, cases. But what happens if we simply ask the harpist to tune that B to a B-sharp, sounding C? We get a kind of hexatonic scale, which naturally feels more open and less heavy. From here, we could ask the player to sharpen the E string to E-sharp, giving us an F pentatonic scale. Or we could leave the E alone and flatten the F to create a C pentatonic. Both options considerably lighten the weight of the glissando and subtract a certain amount of harmonic solidity. There's a freer direction the music can take now. In the key of C, it's fairly simple and quick to ask the harpist to change the tuning to C pentatonic. She'll push down on the B pedal to the left for a sharp, while pedaling up on the F pedal to the right for a flat. When pedal changes are positioned on either side of the harp, they're much easier on the player. As you can see in this example, the pedal changes for F and E flat are both positioned one to each foot, as they are for G, D, and A. B flat isn't quite so instantaneous as the E and A pedals are both under the right foot, and they're three pedals apart. If they were side by side, the harpist might be able to change them both in one smooth motion, but in this case she'll have to change them one at a time. You might notice a certain trend in tuning. Because of the diatonic landscape, it's possible to turn every key from a full seven notes to a pentatonic scale with two enharmonic changes. But the flat keys require sharpening of certain pitches, which is what it means when the diagram shows a box below the line. And the sharp keys require flattening of certain pitches, which is when the little box is above the line. This eventually gets all mixed together as you get to where the keys meet up in the middle of the circle of fifths, but it's still a quick and easy way to help you remember how to work out tunings for the more commonly used keys. I'll finish this tip by drawing your attention to some enharmonic tunings that take away yet one more pitch from the pentatonic to actually spell out seventh chords suitable for glissandos. It's easy to miss these in Cecil Forsyth's long rambling discourse about harps, but they're indispensable for harp scoring. Not every seventh chord is possible, but there are a few dominant seventh chords, all three possible diminished seventh chords depending on the position that you place them in and a few half-diminished and minor seventh chords, which Forsyth calls parts of major ninths and parts of elevenths. You'll never know when these chords might prove useful in a gushing passage, and there are other chords available if you have time to work them out. <laughs>